It's Thursday, the 3rd of February. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. In between London runs here on the 777, a couple of tail strikes have made the aviation news here recently. Let's take a closer look. First off, what's a tail strike? It's anytime you strike the tail of the aircraft, usually right about here on either a takeoff or a landing or a go around. And the problem with tail strikes is potential damage to the aft pressure bulkhead. This spherical, let's show you over here, this piece right here, normally mounted in the rear of the aircraft, right here at the end of the tube before it starts tapering, very close usually to where the tail strike occurs. And the problem if you damage the aft pressure bulkhead is you may depressurize the aircraft, or it may result in a rapid depressurization somewhere down the line. So the normal procedure when you have a, when you suspect a tail strike is to come back around and land, or if you're up at altitude, come on down, depressurize the aircraft and come back and land. Both of these tail strike aircraft are Airbus aircraft that we're going to be discussing today. The first one is JetBlue's flight 1748, Hayden, Colorado, starting with the aviation herald, Simon Radecki. JetBlue Airbus A320-200, that's the relatively, what we used to call the short bus. It's been a while since I've been on the Airbus, so I'm going uh, uh, to be testing my memory and uh, having to refer to some reference notes as we get into this discussion. I got about 1,500 hours in the Airbus more than five years ago. Airbus A320-200, uh, flight 1748 from Hayden, Colorado to Fort Lauderdale, was departing Hayden's runway 10 at 11.57 local when the aircraft's tail contacted the runway surface on takeoff. The aircraft continued a normal departure and climbed to flight level 310 when Denver Center forwarded a message to the crew stating that they had had a tail strike on the departure runway. The crew subsequently decided to divert to Denver and the aircraft landed on 35 right without further incident 45 minutes after departure, no injuries. The aircraft sustained substantial damage, however. Now, the reason for um, this airstrike, this tail strike is being um, di discussed right now. And Hayden Airport is a uncontrolled airport here near Steamboat Springs, Colorado, the ski resort area. It does not have a control tower, only a Unicom frequency 1230. The point being that uh, you, you can get visual traffic into this airport or was this airport at this time IFR and did ATC somehow set up this King Air traffic to come in to land opposite direction of the Airbus taking off at which time the Airbus attempted to do evasive maneuvers on takeoff resulting in this tail strike. That all has yet to be sorted out. Another problem with having a tail strike is you may have suffered a tail strike and as a pilot may not even know it because the tail strike is occurring way back here and you're sitting way up here. It may be only the flight attendants or somebody from the crew that gives you the heads up that you potentially had a tail strike. Now, this one was captured on video. Check this out. It's a solid hit, solid tail strike. We got a lot of new flight attendants in the business now, and they may not realize what has happened here, but it's incumbent on crew members from the back to work with the crew members in the front to discuss the possibility of a tail strike and a return to the airport so that you can get the aircraft inspected for a possible tail strike and possible damage to the aft pressure bulkhead. This next tail strike is captured by our good friend Jerry over at Big Jet TV. Please go over and support his channel. He's got a great plane watching channel where he sits out there at the Courtyard London Heathrow Airport and films these aircraft as they come and go all day long and has a great fan base. And when he captures images like this, this is very instructive for those of us in the industry. I don't want to freeze frame this here to show you the windsock. We've got a pretty good breeze blowing mostly down the runway, but with a bit of a right crosswind component to it. So this is an Airbus A321neo coming into London's Heathrow Airport.
Fairly well stabilized approach at this point. Bounce on the right main. Bounce on both mains. Tipped way up on the left main and go around and just tag the tail on the go around. So there's the first bounce on the right main. And you can see a little bit of left aileron input in here. Remember, he's got a right crosswind, and you want to keep that wing down into the wind. But with that input and that bounce, he started rolling the aircraft up and to the left. And he's already starting to correct for that with right aileron input. This is the aileron here, and this is the spoilers. Over here, the spoilers work together with the aileron to give you roll control of the aircraft. There's the second bounce. Did you see those spoilers? The all of the now most of the spoiler panels began to deploy automatically for the landing, but right away the pilot decided to go around, hit the toga, take off and go around switch, throttles forward, and that retracted the spoilers immediately. Spoilers retracted. But now it gets up on the left main. And I can't tell what control input he, the pilot's got going on right there. Now he's got his right aileron input and recovers. Throttling up, it takes a few seconds for the engines to spool up, but as those low-slung, powerful engines spool up, that's going to impart a pitch-up moment as well. He's got plenty of speed to rotate out of there. All that combined together right there results in a real quick tail strike. It's just very quick. And then he's out of there, come around, and lands uneventfully. Now, Airbus aircraft have control law protections built into the fly-by-wire computerized flight control system to help prevent tail strikes, but they can still happen in Airbus aircraft. Let's take a look at that. Before we do that, let's take a quick look at the damage to the JetBlue aircraft. There was some confusion in the media about what the damage looked like. A passenger apparently took a picture of this saying, look at the damage to the tail. No, that's normal. That's not the part you're looking for. This is the damage you're looking for underneath the tail right down in here and this is the jet blue aircraft out of hayden and you can see the problem with the aft pressure bulkhead if this is the seam for the aft pressure bulkhead i'm not sure if it's this seam here or the seam just forward of it regardless when you scrape the tail, you shave the heads of those rivets off. They're no longer fastening. They're no longer doing their job holding all that sheet metal together. Plus, you've bent and damaged potentially some, <coughs> some of the uh, structure in there. So that's why it's so important to keep the aircraft depressurized and bring it back around and land and have it inspected. This is, well, it's repairable. It's not easily repairable. It can be a very expensive repair if you've got to go especially if you've got to replace that whole aft pressure bulkhead. That's a major job. Now, tail strike can happen in any brand of aircraft, Boeing, Airbus, it doesn't matter. But here's some of the things about Airbus to consider. Remember, the Airbus is a, well, all the modern airliners are basically fly-by-wire, flight-controlled, computer-controlled flight controls. The Airbus uses side-stick controllers, much like the game stick controller for a joystick for a video games, on the right and left side of the, of the uh, cockpit and these these sticks are not interconnected so the pilot flying will operate the stick and the pilot not flying his stick will just remain motionless they're not interconnected quick review of airbus flight control laws you have normal law alternate law 
abnormal alternate law and direct law. Only in direct law do you have direct control input. Whatever you do on the stick is directly translated to the controls. All other forms of law here have built-in protections to prevent you from doing some of the common things that pilots tend to do. Uh, stall the aircraft, flying too slow, overspeed the aircraft, flying too fast, overbank the aircraft, too great of a bank angle, and in certain conditions prevent tail strikes. Because each of these, in normal law, you have these different modes. You have the ground mode, the flight mode, and the flare mode, all available in normal law. Where the ground mode in normal law is similar to direct mode in that you have direct control over the aircraft until the aircraft reaches about 50 feet or so and goes into flight mode. And the flare mode engages at about 50 feet. Here it is. Normal law, bring it on down to about 50 feet. And then flare law begins. And this flare law is designed and it has been changed somewhat by engineers to help prevent tail strikes on flare and landing so that no matter how hard you pull back on the stick you will not be allowed enough um, degrees nose up attitude to strike the tail and here you can see it's been changed from a, a maximum of 18 degrees pitch up and depending on different makes and models and software packages you can crank that down to seven or even four degrees uh, maximum pitch and then not until you've had the aircraft on the ground for five seconds does it then go to ground law. So on that go around, you Airbus guys and Airbus engineers and flight control engineers, what mode was that aircraft in on that go around? It was not on. I don't think it was on the ground long enough for five seconds to get it back into ground law. So what mode, what law was it in? Very interesting. And would that help have, depending upon what mode it was in, would that have helped to contribute to the possible tail strike? But once you got that inertia going, it's going to be pretty hard for any computer to prevent a tail strike. Now back on the case of the JetBlue aircraft in Hayden, Colorado, if you are in ground mode and have direct control over the, over the controls until after takeoff, then I could see how you could easily panic mode and strike the tail with the side using the, a strong pull on the side stick controller. Normally, to prevent this from happening, is we're drilled and trained from day one as airline pilots to smoothly rotate the aircraft at a rate of about three degrees per second and fly the mains and then the tail of the aircraft up away from the ground. And then here's the Airbus procedures that if you suspect a tail strike, don't pressurize the aircraft, come back and land quickly and get this thing inspected and work with the other crew members to verify if you had a tail strike. Because again, as a crew member way up in the front, one of the pilots may not, as pilots, you may not realize that you have had a tail strike in the heat of the battle. Another point I want to make, and I kind of remember from my Airbus days, is you don't want to stir the pot, especially on these fly-by-wire side stick control airplanes. When you're in normal law, you're just kind of befuddling the, the computerized flight control systems if you're constantly stirring the pot, which is something we all got to watch for, especially in windy and gusty conditions. Here's a recent arrival in the Husky into a dirt strip in Central California. Just some light gusty winds. Don't mind the DG, the busted DG there. But just kind of punching the controls, working with the wind gusts, but trying to avoid from over-controlling the aircraft. Nice kablamo, Brownie. Trent, we're going to use you for an example here with your permission, I hope. Uh, Trent's trying to, this is his latest video, go check it out. He landed on 11,000 foot Mount Patterson in his turbocharged kit box. But here he's trying to land in a very short little pasture, do a very precision landing and hop over this fence. Deep final drop into there without hitting the fence. And, uh, right. But right in there he gets, <laughs> he, he gets in the, in the pitch mode of stirring the pot a bit. No big deal on these, what I call fly-by-wire aircraft that are operated by steel cable. But it can, 
it can exacerbate the situation excessively stirring the pot, especially so on fly-by-wire, truly fly-by-wire computerized flight controlled aircraft. And in the event of a crosswind, always keep that upwind wing down into the wind. I hope this gives you a better understanding a bit about tail strikes and opens up a wider discussion, especially amongst the Airbus folks about um, some of the different flight control laws and modes uh, in a situation like this, especially when it's a touch and go sort of situation. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially over the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here. Thank you.